<clears throat> Hello, everyone. So uh, let's get back to Fuel Arts online webinar series. Uh, my name is Dennis Belkevich. I'm a co-founder and general partner at Fuel Arts, the first uh, art tech and NFT accelerator. So uh, today we'd like to uh, discuss the topic of uh, acceleration as the new education, about the uh, new standards of education, which are demanded from uh, not only startups or entrepreneurs, but from uh, common people who'd like to achieve something, uh, let's say, in the art world, in the art market, in the uh, digital assets economy. So uh, today I have a beautiful co-host with me, uh, Anna Schwitz, uh, the founder of Patches Art Manager, an experienced uh, educator and uh, uh, <clears throat> PR manager and curator, and uh, Sonia Stabelbein, project manager of Fuel Arts. Hi, everyone. Again, we're happy to be back here on Thursday. We're doing yeah, our traditional webinar series. And this one is going to be more about what we are up to in Fuel Arts these days. As you probably know, and we hope you already downloaded and read our report that we released this March. So it was a full-fledged report on urban tech and NFT startups market. So we've done a very extensive job in research. We have surveyed more than 700 startups from different countries and these two main sectors. We hope um, everyone enjoyed it and we got a lot of positive feedback on it. And now we're ready to continue our work with Acceleration for Acceleration Programs. And Dennis, could you please tell us more about pre Acceleration Programs and what Fuel Arts is up to these days? Yeah, thank you, Sonia. Uh... So let's get back to what Fuel Arts is. Just let's remind the uh, three main, uh, let's say, activities of Fuel Arts. So in spite of the fact that Fuel Arts was uh, originally founded as an accelerator, the first accelerator for art and tech startups, uh, now it has enriched its uh, presence, uh, its activity in three directions. So first of all, we are about content. Uh, Sonia has mentioned our report. We also have uh, weekly webinars, interviews with the key stakeholders of the industry. Uh, and other market reports are on the way to our audience. Uh, the second direction is acceleration. Uh, we have uh, uh, developed three stages of acceleration, like uh, pre-acceleration for the youngsters, for those who have who are in the um, who have no traction, have only idea, let's say from the idea to prototype, then the general acceleration from uh, MVP to um, seed stage, and then uh, later stage acceleration, uh, which uh, deals with uh, um, established uh, businesses or startups on later stage. Uh, it's like um, it's like uh, financial advisory, legal and financial advisory um, regarding the scaling, uh, geographical scaling, cross-market scaling, product scaling, and um, the new opportunities which um, provide, uh, which are provided by institutional investors whom the startups are facing with on the later stages, starting from Series A, B, C, and so on. So, and the third, um, uh, the third direction is uh, our venture arm. Now we are uh, establishing a venture fund who will be, uh, which will be uh, deploying money in the most promising uh, arts and tech startups. Not only those who have passed our acceleration, but also we, we have identified the future unicorns on the market uh, and uh, will be deploying money in, in them. Um, so, Let's get back to acceleration as soon as we're uh, talking about acceleration now. So what what is acceleration? Uh, of course, of course, when, when we uh, speak about acceleration, uh, the, the, the first uh, thing which comes to our mind is a startup. So uh, startups need acceleration. But 
what we found. You, you, you now see uh, the uh, one of the snapshots from our uh, report. So what can be considered a startup? So the, the term startup is more than an idea. So the term startup refers to a um, company uh, in the first uh, stages of uh, operations. But we have identified two main factors which define startups from project or sustainable businesses. So first of all, startup um, implies uh, profit, unlike the project, which can be unprofitable and based on grants, both um, state grants or grants um, from individuals or corporations. Uh, the second thing is that a uh, startup implies innovation. So there should be an, uh, a market problem which the startup uh, tries, to, uh, tries to solve by means of innovation. So a startup means, uh, first of all, profit, then, uh, uh, let's say, uh, solving the problem in a way which, which has never uh, been implemented yet. So unlike the sustainable business, uh, which deals with uh, real businesses and uh, common to most people uh, business models, I mean, already existing. So that's why um, the, 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 we found several, um, several problems of misunderstanding. Uh, general audience sometimes uh, misses the uh, terms uh, startup idea and a uh, real startup. So um, as you can see from this snatch, snapshot, we have identified more or less uh, three and a half thousand ideas in the art tech and NFT uh, ecosystem now, and um, more than uh, yeah, more than one thousand ideas are rising uh, every year. So, uh, can it be considered a startup? Not yet, because uh, this idea should be tested, should be tested by the market. And uh, after that, after the idea is tested on the market, after you, you the, the startup successfully makes uh, customer discovery, uh, this startup receives the first fundraising and then starts acting like a startup. So uh, I could say, uh, simply says, startup is more than a, an idea or better say startup is a verified idea. And uh, then, uh, as you can see, uh, through the process of merges and acquisitions, so-called exit of the startup, it becomes the part of the sustainable business. So it, it uh, is uh, most likely being acquired by some strategies from the sphere, from the ecosystem, either the art tech ecosystem or the tech ecosystem. Um, so the simply says startup is a period in between the idea, which hasn't been tested yet, and uh, the second layer is uh, becoming a sustainable business, which confirms the, the profit. So, um, and what is acceleration? What is acceleration? So um, when we hear acceleration, we, we, we understand, and that's right, that it means shrinking some processes. So shrinking some timeline, we accelerate, we're speeding up something. So there is a path that a startup, uh, since it becomes more than uh, an idea, should pass through all that uh, stages of uh, development, of early stage investment. And this path, um, in general terms, takes uh, one and a half slash two years. Uh, of course, during this period, um, the competitors of that startup, I mean, the founders with the same idea, can overcome, can overbid, can, uh, you know, um, just... Um, uh, wipe this startup off the market. So acceleration just shrinks that term, this uh, two and a half, this one and a half or two years into one or two months range. Uh, so by means of what? By means of providing uh, the educational course, 
which presumes uh, general knowledge about the the way of uh, structuring the startup's life, uh, how to make customer discovery and development, uh, how to test your idea first of all, uh, what is the ecosystem, uh, what is uh, founding, co-founding, what are the relations between founders? Because one of the biggest problems of the startups on uh, let's say in the middle stage are contradictions between the founders which has haven't been raised yet i mean earlier so in that in that sense uh the acceleration also also uh, provides knowledge about financial modeling about go-to-market strategy and uh what is probably the most important about the further actions like fundraising because up to several period a startup should be bootstrapping it means that it should spend the money of founders but there is a benchmark uh, after which the uh, continuation of spending the money of founders is uh, i mean uh, doesn't make sense because the product is more or less ready to be invested in to be shown to the investors so the second thing what an acceleration uh, accelerator does is uh, it prepares through the acceleration program uh, program and process uh, for uh, pitching pitching in front of the investors that's why uh, let's say good accelerators they organize demo days where they invite the uh, let's say the the investors ready to invest ready to uh, listen to the founders ready to listen to their decks so the decks should also be polished by uh, the mentors of accelerator and who are the mentors of the accelerator the, they are the uh, the people from either successful startups uh alumni uh or um let's say influencers uh, to the market who know the problems or um chief executives of uh, established companies, established businesses, or representatives of, of uh, the strategists who are more or less likely would invest themselves. So in many ca uh, cases, mentors become the uh, further investors of a uh, startup uh, after the acceleration. So uh, simply said, um, accelerator uh, creates uh, three benefits, three ma main benefits. So uh, the first benefit is a community. So startups know similar projects and can make test pitches to each other. They can verify their ideas in front of each other. Uh, they can merge. Uh, they can uh, sometimes exchange the, um, the, the founders or the, uh, let's say, the, the tech staff of, of, the, of their team. Uh, the second uh, value is the mentors. So the ecosystem of uh, the mentors, uh, the networking of the mentors, uh, during that, I mean, if not being accelerated, so during that uh, one and a half year period, the startup, uh, I mean, a general startup uh, usually spends uh, from 30 to 50,000 on its existence. Uh, besides creating a prototype, uh, how are these money are spent? First of all, the startup startups need to live, need to eat, need to have a roof above their head. Also, they have to mm, meet uh, the influencers from the industry, their advisors, their mentors, paying them and uh, paying for, for their service, paying for the, for the coffee while uh, they are meeting. So um, uh, in that sense, Accelerator also um, uh, prevents uh, start young startups from uh, useless expenses because it puts together all, all, all the members. So the time to meet them, the time to be introduced the, and the money to spend all, all, all on the, uh, to, to spend with the mentors. So it, it's all shrunk into one uh, simple period. So in other words, uh, accelerators, they help to prevent uh, time loss and money loss. So 
Yeah, and uh, the third uh, network uh, accelerators are dealing with is the investment network. So uh, even those startups who do not receive money during the uh, demo day directly, they uh, are started being tracked by those investment society because uh, sometimes investor keeps an eye on, on the on some particular startup and just uh, looks how it uses someone other's money trying to reach to the next milestone of the startup and then on the second on the on the second or third investment round it um, dives in this uh, project so um, yeah, just just to add, uh, accelerators um, appeared in 2000, uh, 2005, the, the, the first uh, business model as the accelerator. I mean, the first uh, acceleration business model was introduced by uh, Y Combinator, the, 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 most, uh, uh, the most known uh, accelerator who educated such pro projects as Uber, as Airbnb, and uh, someone can say Tinder. Uh, I don't know what's this. So, uh, and now we can enumerate more than three and a half thousand accelerators. So let's say there are three and a half thousand ideas, art and tech startup ideas. And one idea can, can try to apply to one particular accelerator. But most of those accelerators are, have nothing uh, to do with art, unfortunately. So they are uh, either fintech or agricultural, I mean, special niche accelerators. So in recent, um, in recent years, uh, there, uh, there were several uh, art accelerators created and uh, Fuel Arts was the first among them, which is, which is good. So uh, this, year, the, uh, um, this year, we're starting with the first uh, uh, the first program we are going to start with will be pre-acceleration program. So for those who have an idea and who want to test it on the market, uh, we split the ideas into two courses uh, since we understood the, uh, the founders uh, differ uh, a lot. And uh, one of the, uh, I mean, the one part are the, let's see, uh, evangelists of uh, the classic art tech, the classic market. So the um, they're trying to um, implement their ideas to, to, to continue working with classic art by means of technology. Uh, the other part is, um, uh, I mean, is the community who want to find the safest way to play with the craziness of uh, nfts so there will be uh, two uh, pre-acceleration courses of course we try to do our best and to uh, even in spite the they have only ideas i mean most of the startups have only ideas to be checked and developed but during the pre-acceleration courses we'll show them uh, how the real acceleration works so we'll uh, try to give them all the uh, knowledge um, just to understand uh, if they are ready to become a startupper. Uh, because start, being a startupper is, uh, is a kind of a religion. So the difference between a startupper and uh, a manager means that. Uh, Startupper can rely on uh, his uh, on his own idea, and he should believe in his idea. He should trust his idea and his team. And the manager should trust his uh, boss, his salary, and his uh, social benefits by the end of the year. So uh, that course will also help uh, youngsters who are having their ideas to understand if they're ready to, uh, let's say, to, to apply their skills, time and money to the world of uh, startups, if they are creators, not the managers. Uh, I believe uh, a bit later we'll, we'll describe the, the, two, um, the two programs in uh, detail. Uh, now I'd like to uh, introduce more Anna Schwitz, 
who will be one of the mentors of the accelerator. Uh, she'll be also responsible for uh, the uh, lecture called uh, Startup Networking. And she will uh, speak about the importance of the networking uh, while you are rising your uh, startup. Anna? Yeah, hi, Denise. Hello, everyone who joined us today. And uh, actually, I can't wait these courses to start because we receive so many questions, so many interests and curiosities about the courses. Uh, and um, uh, I work in an art management and art business already more than 15 years. And uh, uh, for more than 10 years, I'm engaged in art education. And I have both uh, art business and pedagogical education that is, serves so well to prepare also uh, these programs uh, based on met methodologia uh, of the um, how to how to how to construct the course to make it uh, as much efficient as possible. Online education now uh, is a trend. People evaluate their time and highly will evaluate quality, including the quality of education and. Um, um, why? Because this uh, causes their individual pro professional growth and growth in business value. Uh, and uh, they are ready to invest their time and uh, knowledge in their startup and their business. So uh, I'm very happy to be involved here and to, to be here as a mentor. And I will share all my experience, all the uh, life hacks uh, to help startupers and uh, all the participants of the courses uh, to make their communication strategy, PR strategy, as uh, efficient as possible. That sounds great. Anna, we're very excited to have you as one of the mentors. I feel like I'm quite jealous for the people who are going to take the course and who are going to listen to your lectures. I think it's time to actually switch a little bit and talk about in detail, like about the pre-acceleration courses that Dennis has mentioned before. Dennis, could you elaborate like who exactly can take these courses and who it can benefit and like how, how exactly? Well, uh, thank you. Uh, first of all, uh, let's say we, we split our audience into four groups. Please uh, don't be offended those who, uh, who are in between those groups or who for some reason couldn't uh, find themselves. Uh, there but actually the first group is uh startup founders and cultural entrepreneurs so uh for them we're trying to explain what's the difference between a founder and an entrepreneur we're trying to find the market niche for their ideas so um they receive uh guidance practical tools for scaling up their startup as they become as soon as they become a startup. Uh, the second group is art managers and gallery owners. Um, they are mostly from the uh, physical part of the art market, but they want to understand the digital transformation of the art market and uh, the future of the art market because uh, the pandemic showed that art market is uh, useless without technology. It can rely only on technology, but also on people. So uh, in between technology and people, I mean, what combines both technology and people? Uh, my answer is flexible business model. So we never know if the pandemic or uh, unfortunately something more powerful could uh, return back and in what way now we have war in Ukraine and uh, so flexibility, flexibility of uh, business models is what we'll be trying to implement in the heads of uh, the art managers and gallery owners. Uh, we'll, we'll help them scaling their uh, businesses to online. Uh, and for some of them, uh, we'll simplify the process of shifting to digital and NFT because nowadays the biggest question is the generation on the art market is a generational shift so which means that uh most of current collectors tradition of traditional art 
they do not understand the benefits of digital art and in several cases they do not respect it for less of history and uh, on the contrary the digital uh, owners the, the digital art community nft collectors they do not understand the value of physical objects mm. uh, uh, just because they there is a uh, 5,000 uh, 5, year history behind uh, the traditional art. That's why it's um, better, better to say for them, we don't uh, respect it. We just reject all the physical. But those two worlds should uh, come together and should exist together. And we, we, we believe in the uh, mutual benefits for those two worlds. That's why shifting to digital and NFT and vice versa, shifting from digital and NFT uh, from the digital asset um, uh, community to the physical artworks uh, independently in the form, in the, uh, form of NFT uh, or in the form of um, fine art, sculptures, uh, it doesn't matter. Anna, could you please elaborate on the two more groups? Yes, sure. To continue the words of Denise, I'd like to underline that these programs, both programs, uh, meet the needs of multiple audiences and help to address their prior professional development goals. For example, if you are an artist, the classical artist or NFT creator, uh, you'll receive guidance and practical tools for your career in digital art market. Uh, you'll get knowledge and instruments to become visible in uh, NFT space. That is huge, huge, huge universe. You'll learn how to navigate there and uh, you'll get secrets of monet monetizing uh, your art globally because, uh, of course, we are not thinking just about to show our art. We are thinking about how to earn money on it. And uh, we consider artists and some artistic projects also as startups. And that is very interesting trend to, to see. Uh, for example, the, um, the next group, the next audience that we consider also as a part of our audience, uh, uh, students and young professionals who are growing, uh, who are developing their career in art tech and NFT and business and uh, investment section. Uh, if you're a student or young professional, um, with uh, our mentors, you go. Uh, they they will help to do the steps to understand real art world, not not theoretical part, but real and a digital realm. Also, you'll get insights into one of the fastest growing industries that we are observing now. Uh, that is hype. That is so energetically growing and so active. So uh, our mentors will help to navigate there. Uh, also, <clears throat> we are seeing here um, a lot of opportunities for professional networking and uh, to start your career in, uh, in our business. It is a very good base to start it. It, is, uh, it can be considered as a uh, springboard for your business life. So guys, young and active, please uh, take a look uh, on these courses. I think uh, you will find here what you need short very efficient very concentrated and uh, very practical thank you Anna and dennis it seems like there's so many people who will be interested uh in these courses and can benefit like so many different people with like different kind of expertise and backgrounds and like different everything basically so we would probably it would be a good time now to talk about the first course the classical art tech market dennis could you please elaborate like what topics will be covered what kind of classes will the participants of the course have mm -hmm. yeah thank you sonia so uh all the classes will be started with uh, an introduction lecture introduction group meeting where all the uh, startups will introduce themselves, introduce their uh, ideas and start what is called team building. So we'll, uh, in spite we are in close communication with all the um, 
applicants and we've we've held uh, both auditions with them and we are sending them questionnaires and we know uh, them uh, quite well even before the courses uh, but it's uh, very important for them to to feel each other to to, to look on each other and to start communicating uh, do, I mean in, in the next uh, four weeks and beyond so uh regarding uh, the art tech startup scores uh the the most important lecture is um will be provided by uh, roxana zarnagar the the co-founder <clears throat> of uh fuel arts and a brilliant art expert with the experience on the highest level uh highest positions in artnet and christie's so she will uh, speak about art market ecosystem how it works uh about infrastructure and the key players to understand better and later on the pains of the um, art market. Uh, let's say the, the students of uh, Parsons School of Design and uh, South Beast Institute of Art, they love Roxana's approach when it comes to uh, art market ecosystem. In my opinion, she is the best in <clears throat> putting all that planets into uh, one infographics and to um, uh, speak about the relations between them. Then it will be my part. Uh, I will speak about the um, art market needs, so problems, solutions uh, in the art market. Uh, and uh, let's say, are there still free niches which the startups can occupy so we'll uh, speak about demand driving startups and supply driving startups and uh, uh, we'll try to uh, understand for for sure we'll, we'll we'll understand how to obtain information how to analyze information and uh, how uh, to um, let's say uh, test the viability of a startup idea uh the next mentor would be uh common for the both art tech and uh nft course uh his name is danny danny city uh the guy who uh created uh the, the guy who was behind yahoo finance and experienced a uh, startup and also for for many years his, uh, he works as a mentor for a number of accelerators so uh he will give three uh, three uh, classes, uh, what is a startup and what is not, so the path of the startup or what to be prepared. Uh, the second one is uh, um, uh, prototyping, what is a prototype, what is traction, what is a useless prototype. And the third lecture would be around uh, preparation for the um, for the demo day, so how to uh, what's the structure of the investment presentation? Uh, what is the first thing uh, an investor looks at? Uh, some practical issues, uh, let's say more slides or more text, the balance between design and information. So we'll, understand, we'll, we'll um, analyze uh, cases of successful and unsuccessful presentations. So you'll, with Danny, you'll be ready to uh, even to go at the shark tank uh, TV show, if uh, the international audience knows what I'm talking about, but in the US is program number one, I mean, must see for all the startups and for all the investors, I believe. So um, after that, we'll have uh, uh, Maria, Maria Savelieva. Uh, she will speak about the product market fit, uh, what is customer discovery, customer development, um, more practical issues, how to make customer discovery, practical uh, recommendations uh, for conducting that and, and uh, how to develop um, customer development after the customer discovery. So <clears throat> the main indicators of uh, the future sales uh, that a startup should know, I believe everyone is familiar with the word uh, sales funnel if not just join our course uh then there will be anna schwitz yes uh, anna yeah i mean so, so, of, of course you, you will tell much more during your course but now i have to uh present 
you again so network and publicity instruments for our tech startups uh, a lot of startups sometimes um, you know they are aware of uh, disclose uh, disclosing some information they they're staying aside of networking because they're afraid someone might uh, just steal their idea so what's the balance between fear and opportunity networking and disclosure uh how to build professional networking from scratch um also the target audience of your uh networking and the use of uh publicity uh, so um so how to to um to to work with uh let's see uh how to work with free marketing tools while you are a startup um then there will be another brilliant speaker natasha letanor natasha rotman letanor from france uh, so she will speak about go to market strategy as soon as the startups are i mean know all the uh, previous material they should understand what is the go-to-market strategy so based on customer discovery and customer development their networking so um how the go-to-market strategy is planned and on what stage of a startup uh natasha will tell about her personal attraction because she was responsible for um, um for uh marketing she was chief marketing officer and uh head of sales at um, Collectrum and also at Artnet. So, uh, and Collectrum, as we know, was uh, in, in 2015, um, a nice year for uh, all the art tech ecosystem. So in 2015, uh, Collectrum was the most expensive startup ever sold for 16.5 million. Uh, by the way, the CTO of uh, Collectrum was, uh, uh, Tim Kampanchenko, uh, Ukrainian Ukrainian guy who who then uh, was the uh, CTO of uh, Christus, of Christus, and now he is CTO. I mean, chief technical officer at um, Artery. So uh, then Diego, the women audience would be happy to communicate with uh, Diego, a brilliant uh, financial modeler and uh, financial analyst. So what is business modeling and what is financial modeling? Uh, the main types, um, let's say, uh, what, uh, what kind of financial model should be prepared for the first meeting with an investor? Um, the evidence that investors look at first uh the main mistakes in building financial models you will you will know from an experienced uh diego so then uh there will be two lectures by uh, investment partner of fuel arts katya cohen so she will speak about founders relations and team building and also about the venture ecosystem and investment uh, relations. So why team building is important. Well, the main mistakes uh, was the optimal number of co-founders. Um, don't worry. Uh, it's yeah, yeah. I, I mean, the the average, by the way, from our report, you, you, you might know that um, the average uh, number of uh, co-founders in our tech is 2.5 sorry i mean two yeah two or three co-founders but sometimes th there are eight co-founders especially in digital art and nfts like 10 artists or 10 programmers they are just united by um by big idea so and also katya will uh, speak about angel venture institutional investments what's the different a code of communication with the investor uh, and what is an investment pipeline. Then it comes to tech. Uh, so another um, mentor, uh, experienced mentor, uh, Peter Vainitsky, uh, also a Ukrainian, but working in the European Union. So uh, tips and 
tricks of working with internal or external tech team. So who is a CTO and how to build a tech team. Um, blockchain for our tech, who needs it, why? Uh, of course, he will tell also about a personal traction. So in, in two words, uh, let's say he will explain the importance of CTOs and uh, how to spend less money with programmers while you're hi hiring programmers. So gaps and hazards of uh, the tech side of an art tech startup. And let's say the, the last specified lecture will be uh, from uh, Galina Isakiv, a uh, proud Ukrainian. Um, yeah, uh, the associate of the seed fund, uh, venture capital investment fund, um, uh, international one, but also created by uh, Ukrainians. So she will speak about fundraising and how to be prepared. So what is fundraising? Why it's so important? Uh, oh, until what time a startup should bootstrapping? Uh, what is smart money and why is so attractive? Uh, so, and also about uh, crucial items and uh, hazards uh, in uh, the realization of the fundraising strategy. So, after those uh, lectures, there will be, I mean, they will, uh, they will pass in for uh, four weeks and then we'll have one week for let's say, uh, additional two hours of mentorship with those startups and they will be prepared for, a, a, let's say, a small uh, gamified demo day. Of course, in terms of ideas, in terms of ideas, most investors are, let's say, waiting for, for the real startups to be shown in demo days. But we spoke to our investors who, who rely on fuel arts choice and, and our educational capabilities and they said no no we we would like to 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 see those who are uh who have only ideas and uh, how they came up to let's say some kind of development and testing those ideas during your mentorship so let's organize let's make the test demo day so there will be a demo day and those uh, brave ones who will um be ready to present their uh their um decks with their elevator speeches uh, will have the chance to take part in the demo day. Uh, by the way, you can see the, the previous demo day of the general, I mean, full, full body acceleration program, which we had last year. Uh, there were quite experienced startups which uh, received money after that. And uh, yeah, you, 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 should, uh, you should look through how it went. Uh, so, uh, and... Uh, you understand the, the specifics of the demo day and the questions the startups are asked and the way they are presented. Thank you, Dennis. So, yes, like Anna, could you please elaborate more on the NFT course? Yes, yeah, sure. Uh, digital NFT startup course is very intense program as well as the previous one. Uh, but in this one, we will have uh, more than 20 webinars dedicated to NFT startups and NFT based products. Uh, I'll name uh, the most important topics and mentors. Uh, the first one, uh, for sure, for, from Dennis. Uh, you, you can see now that Dennis uh, understands these topics so deeply, so profoundly. Uh, so uh, NFT not, uh, is not an, a market, markets uh, disrupting by NFT technology. So uh, what is the NFT market like? When, uh, when and how did it appear, what does it consist of, and how to evaluate it. So if you're not uh, satisfied with just superficial view on the NFT market, like reading news feed on your LinkedIn, like reading articles, but you really want to understand how it works, you should, you should come here to this course and go deeply, dive to this topic and understand all the structure. Um, the second uh, webinar, uh, it is called What is NFT? NFT-based solutions, NFT-based startups. Uh, it will be uh, done by Anton Zimanets. Uh, it will give you basic knowledge of the nature of NFTs. And uh, it is always good to upgrade yourself and this knowledge. And uh, the information 
so systemized, only Anton can do this systemized structure to understand how NFT-based startups are formed and how they work. Uh, the next webinar will be by Alex Blagerev, uh, NFT ecosystem metaverse. Uh, and the questions here are very essential and very important. Will humanity move to the move uh, to life in metaverse? And what will remi remain in real world? Um, and is it true that NFTs are paintings that will be hung on the walls of the metaverse of how it will work? And um, and by the way, the metaverses are also NFTs, if you didn't know. Uh, so if you are confused or if you're curious, uh, you need actually to, to, to be there and to listen to Alex. Uh, then NFT ecosystem and gamif gamify by Konstantin Kogan. And um, do you know that most NFT buyers are gamers by nature and therefore we need to know their habits and it is also true that any NFT startup must, must, I underline, contain elements of gamification. Otherwise, uh, the, attentions, the attention of the audience cannot be retained. Uh, we have so much information around us. And uh, so uh, the founder of Bullclerks Foundation will tell all about this and how to manage this uh, gamification question inside your startup. Um, then it is important also to see, uh, to observe the, the topic uh, by a point of view, from the point of view of collector. And here we have the best one, Sylvain Levy, and uh, his topic is NFT ecosystem, uh, NFT market from the perspective of collector. Uh, if we create works, our goal to understand uh, uh, what the end user wants and what about the conflict of generations. So we will speak about the uh, collection of NFT art and uh, Sylvain will share all his uh, experience in this topic. I, I think this speaker is absolutely amazing. I definitely want to be on this webinar. Um, the next one, uh, we continue to explore uh, the NFT ecosystem, and uh, now from the point of view of artist Posey Lang, uh, it's not only a successful NFT artist, she came from classical art, as maybe a lot of you who are watching us know. Uh, she's also gamified her NFT series of works, essentially turning it into a full-fledged startup, and we have one uh, beautiful uh, secret and bonus for those who will attend the these courses, and Denise will share it uh, in the end of our webinar. And we are moving forward. Uh, so what else uh, me miss here? So NFT ecosystem, it also, it also should have to contain a uh, curator. And Alina Gardienka will uh, tell us uh, more about this point of view. Because my, <laughs> my point of view that uh, absolutely needed a curator inside the uh, NFT ecosystem. And does the NFT sector need curators? The answer is for sure, yes. And what value do they bring? OK, <laughs> I think that the most part, part of you are like lost in the millions, millions of duplicated NFT uh, images. And uh, mm -hmm, what is the aesthetic and meaning behind them? And uh, what we expect from digital art as we expect something from physical art. So we will speak with Alina and Alina will, will give us all the answers on this controversial maybe questions uh, then uh, the the next like role and the next important person uh, in NFT ecosystem is community manager and Alexandra Luzan who I know personally for many many years is a real professional in this field and uh, she will uh, explore these questions like uh, why is a community manager the most expensive profession in NFT art market, uh, NFT market in general today, and uh, what is the meaning of their work and how to choose a good uh, community manager. Uh, we are living now uh, without any borders, and we are living now. Uh, we live now in uh, uh, online system, and who are. Uh, transporting and who are expressing ideas of your startup and how uh, this person communicate and how this person engage more and more uh, people uh, to share the ideology, the concept that you're um, that you're developing. That is very very important. 
Uh, then the lady that I also know for many years, Anastasia Glebova, who is professional uh, lawyer in the segment of art. And uh, if we say NFT, we mean crypto. If we say crypto, we mean legislation. Uh, the latest legal updates from the art founder uh, who really knows all the details, all the hidden rocks in this uh, sea, how to make your activity uh, legally clean and beautiful and nice and uh, that everything is uh, absolutely correct and, um, uh, and only in this way you can continue to to grow. Uh, scaling classic to NFT uh, with uh, Arianna Perini. Uh, what is it about? Many companies today want to move from classic card market to NFTs and uh, is it difficult? Can be. Uh, and what are the pros and cons in this process? Um, so we will uh, give, a, give an opportunity to share the, uh, her experience to Ariana as an employee of, of the largest online art gallery, one of the strategists of the art market in contemporary. And uh, this is absolutely uh, necessary also to understand this uh, shift between classic to NFT. And uh, of course, go to market strategy uh, strategy for NFT based startups by Christina Steinbrecher, uh, the brilliant professional with lots of experience uh, behind her back. Uh, what are the futures um, uh, features of uh, entering the market for NFT startups? And what is the difference from classical ones? Uh, real professional, real practitioner, founder of blockchain.art. Uh, she will she will share her experience and knowledge. So uh, just just like a short resume about the courses, as you can see, and I know that a lot of uh, startup participants uh, are watching us now. Uh, these programs are constructed, designed to include all the facets uh, that you should know. Uh, you can see here creative part, strategic part. Uh, financial part, technical part, PR and communications, art law. And in this sense, we are trying to give you all the information that you are absolutely equipped and ready to develop your startup uh, and to, to bring it to reality. Thank you, Anna, for such a detailed like explanation and description of the NFT course. I feel like we also got lots of questions about the course details, like is it run online, like how many uh, days it's going to be, like how many classes we're going to have. So I feel like it's important to say that both of the classes, both of the courses, classical art tech, our startups and the NFT one, it's going to be online courses, both of them are run via Zoom. Also, they're both going to be four weeks, so we're starting from May 16th, four weeks from then. And um, basically the difference is that classical art tech startup course is a little bit shorter. It's going to be 15 classes overall, summing up in 30 hours. And the NFT course is going to be a little bit more extended. It's going to be 22 classes, 22 workshops, overall amounting to 50 hours together. Also, I feel like what is very convenient that every participant is going to have an access to their personal account where they're going to have all the course materials, all the classes, all the information during the classes, during the program itself and afterwards as well. And regarding the time when it's going to be held during the day, so we're doing everything according to New York time. It's going to be morning, so it's going to be from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. roughly. And it's going to be three times per week. So it's going to be high likely Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Could you please tell us more about like the pricing, how people apply and the, all the procedure behind that? Well, yeah, so uh, we, we decided uh, we decided to, first of all, to price those pre-acceleration courses as soon as um, the entrepreneurs from the stage from idea to prototype, they do not have equity. They do not have, they, they are incorporated startups. They don't have companies to give equity to uh, the accelerator because in general, accelerator creates, I mean, um, uh, takes equity for its service. 
That's why most of the accelerators are accepting only those startups who are incorporated, sometimes in some particular uh, geographical regions. So uh, that's why for the stage from idea to prototype, we decided just to uh, put the quite uh, modest and reasonable, affordable price for the startups just to pay to our uh, mentors. But at the same time, we did this course free for all the Ukrainian startups and the Ukrainian founders, co-founders, and also for those companies, for those international startups who have Ukrainian CTOs, because they are worth being hired. And uh, let's see, the, the trace, the trace of uh, Ukrainians uh, can be noticed in more than 40% of all blockchain projects as starting from CTOs to uh, <clears throat> from CTOs to uh, just um, middle level programmers. And I'd like just quickly enumerate uh, several Ukrainian startups which we know, which the market knows. So first of all, we are the, the marketplace, online marketplace who started with digital art even before the NFTs uh, was uh, NFTs were uh, hype. So uh, and Anastasia Glebova, as um, Anna mentioned, will be one of the one of the mentors. So uh, the second startup uh, is Dress Six. Uh, Dress Six is a California-based uh, startup, but uh, created by Ukrainians, uh, also friends of ours. Uh, so uh, it's about fashion. It's about uh, digital fashion. So just uh, subscribe to them and um, follow their attraction and buy their uh, online fashion because, you know, in several years we all be wearing uh, digital fashion, uh, remaining naked. So, uh, yeah. Is, is that all? So, uh, yeah, we, we could enumerate <laughs> se several more, but okay, uh, let's, let's, be artsy, let, let's be artsy together and um, good. So uh, we, we already have uh, several successful examples when international startups, in order to apply to fuel arts pre acceleration programs, they started um, inviting Ukrainians as co-founders, not only because it's for free, but because they just realized that Ukrainians worth being invited. And uh, and even, uh, frankly speaking, not in not only in the difficult and tragic times, but uh, let's say uh, after uh, after the war finishes. So um, yeah. Mm, I've already told about the networking and business uh, opportunities for the uh, course uh, participants as community uh, of the startups, as the uh, network of uh, mentors and investment networking. Also, uh, we, we should understand that uh, an accelerator gives some kind of a cre credibility. So as a result of our acceleration programs, all the, um, all the startups will receive certificates. And those certificates will be <laughs> NFT certificates. And they will be uh, minted by uh, the platform called WeWay. Also, uh, or, uh, also created by Ukrainians based in Dubai. So um, let's say several day, days ago, we came to an, an agreement with their platform uh, and uh, their uh, representatives will also become the mentors talking about tech in NFT and how to implement uh, your ideas. I mean, if you want to create a digital NFT marketplace. So there will be two more classes based on general NFT tech and NFT marketplace in particular. Uh, also, they will speak about how to establish their own token because uh, sooner or later, 
every NFT related startups wants to establish their own token as a cryptocurrency. So the example of uh, Bored Apes, uh, Bored Ape uh, Yacht Club shows that uh, those tokens uh, could uh, be worth sometimes more than uh, the actual NFTs. But also the, the, uh, what, what has happened yesterday, I mean, when Elon Musk with one of his tweets putting Bored Ape as his, um, uh, on, on his avatar, he increased the value of the tokens to uh, up to 20%. And then he wrote, "I will not tell you one uh, what you, you you may you may Google that yourself." But after the second tweet, in a while, the same day, the um, uh, let's say the the value of the token drop down. So yeah, uh, we'll also try to teach you how to avoid the impact of uh, Elon Musk, how to minimize the impact of uh, Elon Musk and Twitter on your. Um, utilization and activity. No, I, I'm not joking at all. <laughs> Maybe a little bit. So, yeah, you, you'll receive the NFT certificate. Uh, of course, for those who, who who prefer brick and mortar certificate, yeah, you could print it. It will be in PDF. And, but anyway, it will be it it will be uh, done. It will be established. So we have come to the final question. Let's say which is in the. Uh, in the name of our today's uh, meeting, so why pre acceleration is a new education? Let me start the first, and then I'll ask my, my colleagues to, uh, to proceed. As we said earlier, so an entrepreneur today is, I mean, he lives in a rapidly changing economy. So, and uh, what he needs are adapt adaptable models and uh, methodologies for working in any conditions. So, from our perspective, the education as we knew it, just a number of knowledge without the possibility of the further implementation, just the knowledge and, let's say, the um, alumni networking to discuss it will not work anymore. So uh, nowadays, it's much more important to have the combination of a personal knowledge and the ideas which can uh, which can be developed by means of that knowledge. So two in one, personal knowledge and ideas. So knowledge is not enough. And uh, that's why from our perspective, a lot of um, startups can be called, I mean, a, a lot of business ideas could be called nowadays a human startup, like an artistic career. Look at Poesy Liang, one of our mentors who developed her uh, NFT collection. She added gamification there. She developed that running rabbit NFT collection. So she started being a startup herself as a personality, as a business entity. So, uh, and uh, that's why we're, we think that the generation of uh, hired managers is now being replaced by generation of creators of human startups. That's why, in our opinion, the acceleration, like a combination of a knowledge and the project, which allows to implement that knowledge, is uh, the future. So, in fact, here at Fuel Arts, we, we release creators. We release adaptive models. We release human startups. That's my uh, big idea. As Dan has also been like referencing now and talking about adaptability, I feel like in 2020 with like global pandemic, we all understood that like actually knowing how to adapt is like the key skill ever is the most important one. And I feel like these two things like uh, the adaptability and being able to learn quickly, these are the most important like skills you can get like in the 21st century. And that's why I feel like pre-accelerations and acceleration programs 
they're actually like super valuable and important right now because this is the time like four weeks it's a very short period of time and you can get so much information so much insight knowledge and such a deep understanding of the whole ecosystem it's not like getting into a small thing that you're interested in you can uh, definitely do that but you can also get like an overall picture what is our tech sector what is nft market and like you can actually also dive in into like marketplaces or other things as well so i feel like that's very important to learn right now and get into the hot sectors like that thank you sonia yeah sonia, I, the machine gun <laughs> yeah sure yeah i want to i i want to add some thoughts um uh, about the courses um uh, what i see at uh, uh what i see there and what i think is very important before the start of the course and th uh, throughout the program we accompany our participants to make their experience there as useful as possible uh, it is very interactive it is not just passive watching zoom boring no it is not our approach uh, this is not a startup's pipeline like next, 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 but tailor tailor made program interested in in the success and performance of our graduates. Uh, this motivates us a lot, and we will be happy to see these startups, these teams, to achieve their goals, to achieve the reality and sales and everything. And um, definitely the format of these pre-acceleration courses is absolutely what is needed now in 21st century. Uh, yeah, because it is fast, efficient, practical, and very, very concentrated. And um, like a small example, not only gadgets and applications need to be up upgraded now, uh, also the people who are uh, working in this uh, uh in in business in general in our tech and nft business in particular we need to upgrade ourselves regularly and uh to do it without any snobbism and uh, uh to be competitive and to be successful and i really think that uh, this concentrated information of knowledge and instruments that you are getting uh, for very, very reasonable price and with all these uh, discounts that we have for different occasions, you're really investing in yourself and your idea, the, the thing that you are developing in your life. So invest in your knowledge and join our courses. Thank you, Anna. I feel like we also got some questions from the audience. Um, checking the comments right now. Yes, the first one is from Xenia. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Should I apply for the course if I don't have yet any startup idea but want to deepen my knowledge in NFT and digital art? Xenia, why haven't you applied yet? <laughs> Sonia, could you please reply to Xenia? Absolutely. I mean, like, it's definitely a very good opportunity to anyone who has an idea and a startup already or who is just curious. So you're more than welcome and please contact us. Uh, yeah, as I said in the beginning of our webinar, uh, let's say, uh, putting w w one phrase, the, the, um, the, the, the online um, courses slogan could be, uh, said like uh, the safest way to play with the craziness the safest way the, the safest way to earn on the craziness so yes if you want to if you're looking for the let's say uh, one of the safest ways safest but interesting paths of being a startup but to to let's say um take much on the whenever you call it a craziness, a hype, or a new market trend, or let's say the uh, development, uh, evolution of development of the uh, classic art market. So in that case, you, you, should, you should apply, at least try to. All right, we have another one. Uh, where can I find all the information about your last demo day? So I think Dennis mentioned it already before, right? So all the information is in our YouTube channel and also on our on our website mainly. Yeah, if you're watching us uh, on the YouTube channel, you, you can see that it's one of it's one of the first videos 
uh, dated uh, October 2021. Okay, just like a nice comment. Looking forward to the course. That's very nice. We're also looking forward to that. What a gorgeous startup as we have. Yeah. Uh, idea holders. I yeah. can see here one of the questions from a, one of our chats. Are there any special requirements for taking your course, Greg, NFT artist? Oh, dear Greg, um, there are two special requirements. Uh, first of all, you should trust in your idea. You should believe in your idea and you, sh you should be ready to die for it. And uh, the second thing is a uh, special requirement is you, you should have your uh, you should have uh, four weeks uh, free for taking the course and be quite attentive to to the uh, advice of uh, the mentors. That's it. I also got another question in our chat. Um, so the question is, how feel art is different from other accelerators? I feel like it's been <laughs> it's been mentioned already so many times. No, uh, I mean, uh, first of all, the name. Yeah, it differs <laughs> with the name. Uh, secondly, uh, if to be serious, you know, uh, what's the difference of uh, the British Museum from all of the museums? It was the first public museum. What's the difference of Harvard, uh, Oxford, Cambridge, Stanford, Yale, and Harvard? Harvard was the first university in the in the United States. Of course, Cambridge and Oxford are in the UK. But anyway, so Hewl Arts is the first art and tech accelerator in this ecosystem field. Uh, nowadays, we have. Uh, several i wouldn't call them competitors because on the in the young ecosystems the more the more accelerators uh, appear the more uh, highly developed the ecosystem is so we inspire our um, our let's say partners the other accelerators to uh, develop faster and to show a good traction with the startups and it's very uh, Let's say the, the, the good news is that uh, many infrastructural, infrastructural blockchains like Polygon, uh, they are uh, establishing their own NFT accelerators to develop their own ideas and to incubate their own startups to, to use uh, their, let's say, um, their stuff, their ideas uh, or the, the startups in whole. So uh, it's a good marker for the, for the industry. So the more accelerators we have, uh, the better. But uh, you, you should just consider fuel arts as Harvard in the real world. Yeah, we were <laughs> the first. I think we got also another nice comment uh, from David. Hi, David from Ecuador. Hi, David. Your work. Well done. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Yeah, Has we can already applied. No? Our, uh, I'm sorry, we continue communicate with David from our previous webinar from uh, the Art Talk, and he has great idea. And uh, we as professionals are here to help David and other uh, founders of uh, startups. And yeah, project. yeah, I remember that that was uh, during the Art Talk webinar last week. Yeah, right. So we have another one from David. We're dealing with funding issues for NFT projects in Ecuador uh, near to uh, Sarah. How few arts can help entrepreneurs to get funding overseas? Well, uh, <clears throat> let, let, let me check our database uh, because we are not ready for, for, for this uh, particular question. So I'll, I'll start replying to the second part of the question. So, uh, of course, if you want to be a successful startup and when it comes to, let's say, NFT startup, it means that it, it uh, doesn't apply to any country. And 80% uh, of NFT startups, they are decentralized. So they are, uh, the information about their incorporation is hidden. So it doesn't matter uh, where, where an NFT artist or an NFT or um, digital art startup or currently lives. Um, the, the, the point is, if, if, he, if his 
idea is viable or not. So uh, this is the first part of, of my answer. So a lot of uh, decentralized startups are uh, being invested in uh, in recent uh, years and in recent months. So uh, yeah, that's that's not a problem uh, if you live in Ecuador. But if you want to, uh, let's say, um, if you want to incorporate uh, in the U if you want to receive U.S. investment, and uh, from our report, you you should know that U.S. Uh, startups they receive the most investments uh, in as as a rule. So if you want to, uh, to receive U.S. investments from sophisticated U.S. investors, you have to be incorporated in the U.S., uh, let's say even uh, through a Delaware LLC uh, small incorporation, uh, even staying in Ecuador. Uh, so that's, that's not a problem at all. Uh, let me look at the... Let me look at the uh, geographical spread. I, I, I have my uh, spreadsheets of... Uh, an echo. Uh, so Ecuador, Ecuador. Let me check what's going on in Ecuador so far. From database on um, geographical spread, we didn't have any Ecuador startups, but I already. Unfortunately, yes, yes. Um, unfortunately, we, we do not have we do not have any Ecuador uh, startups uh, in our database, but. Uh, the um, let's say uh, the South American region uh, is famous for uh, good and uh, high prof uh, pro profile NFT startups as well. So uh, being a part of the South uh, American economy, uh, it's easier to convince investors that you are worth uh, fundraising. But let's say the but the the, the let's say the best advice is that uh, it doesn't matter where you are and where you are incorporated in terms of uh, digital art and NFT startups because you're decentralized. That's the idea. And investors understand that. But just be ready to accept crypto. Yeah, no and uh, here I have uh, here I have to comment. As far as I based in Ecuador, um, as I based in Ecuador, I can see a lot of uh, activity here in uh, NFT scene, and uh, I can just recommend those guys who are developing their NFT startups from here, from Latin America, to use these courses also as a as an instrument to be integrated in the international. Uh, professional community and guys be very wise uh, to uh, to get this course and to have all these connections among your colleagues participants and mentors who will give you the best of their knowledge it is also a very very good strategical step uh, thank you Anna I see another question from Dirk uh, I don't know what, why haven't you uh, why have you missed it? It seems to me uh, a good one. I just read an article in a paper that NFT are on the way back. What is your opinion on this? So yes, yeah. Uh, th th thank you uh, for um, for this question. Thanks for uh, to to our editors for. Uh, showing it online. So that's, uh, dear Dirk, you, you might have obviously read the Wall Street Journal um, article. Yeah, we read it again. Uh, I mean, we read it uh, as well, and uh, it has buried NFT market once again. Uh, mm -hmm. As I remember, uh, it's the fifth or sixth times, uh, time the Wall Street Journal uh, buries uh, NFT market but it's still uh, alive. Yeah, of course, of course, the, uh, if, if, to compare, if to compare with the top sales of uh, Beeple one year ago, uh, someone may, may, may think that the NFT market uh, goes down. It's because uh, the, we, we, haven't, we haven't seen uh, a lot of blue chip sales. Uh, since uh, Beeple, uh, 
uh, was sold. But at the same time, I can assure you that if you go to, let's say, um, uh, cryptoart.com, so you will see that uh, on the first day, days on the first uh, four days of May, so the, the, the total volume of uh, uh, the NFT sold at top eight curated NFT marketplaces uh, is exactly the same for all the 40, uh, for all the 30 days of April. That's the first thing. Then uh, you should, uh, I would recommend you to use the sources uh, the the sources like uh, the other reports, uh, let's say the quarterly NFT market report by nonfungible.com. It can be freely downloaded from from nonfungible.com. So uh, they showed that uh, the total volume of uh, NFT trade NFTs uh, traded in quarter one, uh, two thousand two. Uh, so the, it experienced 13.3% uh, growth in comparison to the uh, quarter four of 2021. Uh, so as the average price and the uh, ownership duration increased, the average price increased uh, in uh, 80%. So... Uh, it shows uh, th 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 those those data uh, shows that uh, the NFT market goes well. It only depends uh, from what angle are you going to look on it. I mean, as for art NFTs, I'm pretty sure that uh, the market is uh, very sustainable. Moreover, we see from the art tactic um, uh, from the Hiscox online uh, trade uh, art trade report conducted by Art Tactic. That the number of physical art collectors who are ready to buy qualified NFTs it increases. So uh, that means that uh, as for art NFTs, I'm pretty sure that they that they will be doing well. As for NFTs in uh, whole, you, you know the uh, the dust, the hype dust goes down. So there will be, uh, of course, the um the selection we're witnessing the selection process uh, what is nft art what can be considered high quality nfts uh, what, what what is let's say uh, nft trash i can allow myself saying so so uh and the definition between the uh curatorial platforms that's why we also implemented one um uh, one um uh, lecture, we invited Alina, Alina Gordienka, one of the five top uh, NFT curators, uh, to discuss, I mean, to, 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 to share her, you know, let's say, attitude towards uh, what can be considered uh, an NFT art and what is uh, related to uh, flea market NFT sales, as we call it, I mean, in between the uh our um arts and texas uh society so um and the re uh, the same process can be witnessed in the other spheres in between gamify and uh, nft sports nfts so the uh it's uh the the dust goes down so yeah, uh, we, we, we see how blue chip NFTs are, uh, you know, we see the difference between blue chip NFTs and, and, and the rest. It's a normal evolutional process. But at the same time, the market of NFTs becomes more and more transparent for collector, for investor, for the, for the regular owner. So... That seems like a great perspective on the NFT market because I'm sure lots of people re after reading that article got very scared or confused about the future of the NFT art and lots of people probably made very quick prejudgments about that the market is dead and nothing is going to happen. I'm checking the questions and it seems like uh, we're pretty much done with all the questions from the audience. Dennis, could you please tell uh, that surprise moment that Anna mentioned before? 
from one of the artists that we mentioned? Oh yeah, the the, the surprise. Yes, um, as we as we said, one of the mentors will be Poezy Liang, uh, the creator of NFT series uh, Running Rabbit. So in between the course members, in between the students of uh, the pre acceleration programs, uh, she'll make a raffle of her NFTs. So you'll have a chance uh, following several, uh, let's say, marketing PR conditions, you'll have a chance to, to, to receive a free NFT from, uh, from a career from um, high profile, uh, high profile uh, NFT artist. Not only the NFT certificate, but also uh, um, an NFT, a priceless NFT, right? That sounds exciting. And it seems like we did cover a lot today. We talked a lot about the courses. We talked about, about the mentors, who's going to be there. Who And, and haven't lost the, the audience. The number of the audience who are listening to us is still. Exactly. That's that's important so moment. That is, yeah. Thank you for that. That's thank great. you, Martin. Thank you, Dennis. And if you have any questions, please contact us. You can also see now the QR codes where you can scan and go to our website and read all the details. Also, you can just write us an email or find us online in all possible social media that exists. We're everywhere. So you can contact us and we'll be happy to answer all of your questions. Yeah. Thanks again. And uh, yeah, Anna, sorry. Yeah, I want to tell to the audience that we start May 16th and it is less than two weeks. So apply today and ask all your questions today. And we have this special uh, online meeting before the um, before you are entering the course uh, to understand your needs, to understand in which situation and which stage of the development you are already. And uh, yeah, apply today. I just recommend invest in yourself, invest in your knowledge, and uh, don't be superficial, be deep and be professional. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. Thank you, Sonia. And with our dear audience, we will uh, have the next webinar in two weeks. Uh, next Thursday, we'll be in, uh, in a rush with the final preparations for our course. And uh, let's meet in uh, two weeks. We'll also share some uh, insights and insider information from how the course is, uh, how the course goes on. Yeah, That's thank great. you. Then we'll see you in two weeks. Thank you. Thank you, trust in your ideas and uh, Believe in the next level education. Believe in your creativity. So pre-acceleration is a new education, right? <laughs> right. Exactly, Anna. <laughs> okay. Goodbye and good luck to everyone. Bye. Bye, everyone.